Ah, the jungle. That's right. The wonderful world of trees, vines, snakes, and animals, and all that sort of thing. Only two of those things are important to this review, and that would be the trees and vines and shrubbery and brushage and all that stuff. That's right, we're talking about a game called Karuba. Now, rather than me give you some long intro where I come running out of the jungle screaming, I thought I would just do the review in the intro, uh, in the jungle, and then we'll take a look at the game on the table and all that kind of stuff. We'll come back and do final thoughts. So Karuba is an interesting game. Uh, it's one of those games that it is the perfect formula for the filler time in game night. It takes about 20-30 minutes to play. While you're playing it though, it's easy. It's simple to teach. You teach two rules and that's really it. There's two rules in the entire thing. You basically you can lay a tile or you can discard the tile to move your character and that's it that's really all there is to it setup is the same everyone sets up their temples and their adventurers and the same exact coordinates on the board and then you go at it one person has their tiles face down where it's completely random they just draw a random tile everyone else has them face up because here's what happens not only does everyone have the exact same layout for their adventure and their temples everyone uses the same tile each turn so one person will pick up number 26 Everyone finds their 26 and they all lay it out. The only rule is it has to be face up. You put it on your board and you try to find the path to get all four of your adventurers to their temples. First one, two, the temples gets more points than the other people who come there second, third, fourth. And then you can also pick up gold and gems along the path, which is an interesting little mechanic. Here's how that kind of works. There's not a lot to this game. That's why the review is so short, but it's so good. So let's take a look right now at how it plays. So Karuba is actually a very simple game, like mentioned before. It's great little art, you know. It's cute, it's adventurous, it's an idol, it's like Indiana Jones. He's dressed up like it. Uh, a lot of fun to look at. Haba, that's a good sign too. So take it out. Everyone gets their board, which I love a board with an individual, a game with an individual board, like I mentioned. It's one of my favorite things is to have your own kind of board with all the things on it. So you can take a look and see. There's different coordinates. You've got your beach coordinates and your jungle coordinates and their adventures on the side who are just there for flavor and not really anything but flavor rule book it's in both sides german and english super easy it's a very small rule book everybody gets a bag like this it's got your tiles in it and your temple and adventures that's it so you will take turns setting out where you want a temple to go someone say i want the Adventure to go on 10 on the beach and 80 on the jungle for the temple. You'll go through, you'll set up all four of these out, you know, all the different places that they could go. Let's get that out there. Only rule is they can't be, they have to be at least three numbers apart. So just for clarity's sake, we'll make sure they're very far apart. Not exactly the easiest thing in the world when they're that far apart, but because you have to cross each other's path and all that sort of stuff. One person will randomly turn over a tile, call it out. This is number 11. All the tiles are different things like this. There's different ones. There's uh, corners, there's straights, there's ups and downs, there's left and right, you know, kind of straight paths. Now you have to keep it oriented where the number's in the top left. That's important. It's interesting because it basically means that everyone's got to play with the exact same information and who does it the best wins. So you can put a tile out anywhere. Usually easier is to start from somewhere as you can get a path going, but not always. And then they keep calling them out. Now the interesting thing is these gems on certain of these tiles when you see a gem or a gold piece on it you will then take one from the supply put it on that tile when your character stops on that tile you will then get the gem or the gold for that matter gold is worth two points gems are worth one point so then they'll keep calling out points number 17 everybody grabs number 17 and moves from there the other option you can do is you can discard a tile with as many exits as there are on it you can move that many spaces. So this is two exits. You can move two spaces. Can't split that up. You can't have one adventure move two and the other one move one. You know, if it's a three tile, it's a one and one. So say we discard that one. He goes one, two, stops here, grabs the gold. You can move less tiles than you want though. So if you want to stop early and get a gold instead of kind of moving all the way out. So that's a possibility too. You just continue laying tiles and making this path until someone finishes the game by either getting all four of their adventurers back to the temples, or not back to the temples, I guess to the temples, or having all of the tiles out. Once all the tiles are out, the game is over. You score based purely on who got to the temples first, and the person who gets there first in a four-person game gets five points, then four, then three, then two for each color 
uh, idol there is or each color trinket or whatever it is. So you can potentially have, you know, if you're the first to get to all four of the symbols, you'd be five times four is 20 points plus all the gold and stuff you picked up on the way. So it's not a super high scoring game. Uh, in fact, the most you can get from the temples is 20 points plus the gold and stuff. So you could, you know, 26, 28 points potentially. But that's it. That's all you do. And you just keep putting your tiles out, placing them out where you think you can go. One of the worst things is this right here, for instance. I have totally boxed out my yellow guy. He can never even enter the board now because he's boxed out. So you have to look at that and know that you're not going to box yourself out and make sure that you're putting things, you know, in a smart way that gets you to where you need to go as efficiently and quickly as possible without stopping one of your other characters from moving. Plus, you have to know, okay, when do I discard this, co this token versus moving with it? It's so much more complex than it looks. It's actually a very easy looking game, but it's actually way, uh, way strategic as it were. So that's Karuba, that's what you do. You're exploring, you're looking for wonderful treasures all throughout this jungle, and you're trying to get your path to your temple and get all your people there. The game ends two ways, like I said. You end with either all four adventurers getting to their temples, or when all the tiles run out, which is how we ended last night, was all four tiles running out. The last time we ended with all four adventurers hitting their place. Now, that typically happens a little bit easier in a two-player game, even though it's weird because it's, it's four people, if you're playing the full count, playing an individual game. The player count does not matter for anything except for two things. One is you will only get to pick where one of the temple goes. And two, you decrease the amount of points you get for getting um, to the temple first. But again, even that's not that big of a deal because you're only competing against one other person in a two-player game. So it is, it's like that you're playing in an individual game against three other people and whoever does best at it which is kind of a very definition of a euro right you're playing your own individual game no interaction at all and you decide how to play your pieces most efficiently it's a great game though it fits that perfect filler slot say you've just finished playing i don't know uh forbidden stars at game night and you're like wow that was a great game i need something to kind of cool off with you can pick hanabi or and, you know hate your friends all night if you want to play something like that filler wise you could play you know a quick round of seven wonders you could do that or you could play this great tile laying game. And the good thing about it is I like tile laying games. This one fits all the niches of a good tile laying filler game, except it does it very organized. It's very neat. It's very clean the way it plays. And there's not a lot to say about Karuba other than that you really should try it. It does, it's way deeper than you think though. So when you're trying to lay your tiles out, though you can lay them out anywhere you want to on the board, it's way deeper than you think. You think, man, uh, if I put this here, I should be good. Well, then you end up boxing out one of your adventurers from completely ever getting to his place. Then you have to decide, well, what about this? I can move three spaces with this. Should I move three spaces or should I just, uh, should I just, um, you know, put it down and hope I can use it as a tea later on? No, there's a lot more thinking than it looks like when you open this game. You look, well, the rules are very simple. You have to think very carefully about each individual move. But the good thing is it plays very, very fast. It's a fast game, especially when you played it a couple times. It The further on the game gets, it slows down a little bit because you have to decide a little bit more where each piece is going to go. But each single tile, you're talking about at most 20 seconds each time. And that's, you know, there's 36 tiles, so 36 times 20. I, that's a lot of math. You can do the math. But it's not that hard of a game to get through. So I really highly recommend Karuba. You should definitely check it out. It's a good price. You can get it even at Target and Books A Million right now too if you wanna to go to a store, if you don't have a friendly local game store around you, or if you wanna get it online, whatever. Make sure you check out Karuba. It's definitely worth playing. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.